It was acknowledged that Māori were tough critters. You weren't going to go into New Zealand without their um, acceptance and without being prepared to give them an acknowledgement or an accord. You had to strike an accord with them that accepted their ways of doing things. There was a sudden kind of land rush, if you like, um, of speculators, people who could see opportunities in New Zealand for land purchase and for resale and making a lot of money. It was a pretty tough frontier uh, country. Some of it not very nice from where we're standing now. Cannibalism, you know, um, violent warfare, um, what we would call today unjust treatment of women and slaves. It was a real rush because what had happened is that Henry Williams, who was the kind of leading missionary in the Bay of Islands, had just been down on a journey to uh, Port, Port Nicholson, as it was then called by the British, uh, Wellington. And he'd seen the evidence of speculative land buying uh, by the New Zealand company. It was exactly the time when these uh, humanitarians are saying, don't go, you've got Edward Gibbon Wakefield, who once used to be called the father of New Zealand, and now is regarded almost universally as a rogue. Um, who is hatching a plan to colonise, and to colonise in so grandiose terms that he believes that hundreds of thousands of migrants could come to New Zealand over a very short time. And he came back to the Bay of Islands, and just a couple of days later, uh, Hobson arrives, bearing orders from the British government uh, to sign a treaty with the Rangatira. The treaty itself, and the signing of the treaty, on the one hand, it changes things superficially because nominally New Zealand is uh, a British colony and Brit Britain has asserted sovereignty over the country. But in reality, it doesn't really change anything on the ground, at least immediately. And over large parts of the country for at least the next two decades, Māori continue to control their own affairs. So I think if we look at Henry Williams' role in the signing of the treaty, we have to understand his antipathy towards the New Zealand Company and extensive colonisation. The intent by the missionaries was probably pure, but post-1840 was a huge influx of, of, of immigrants from Europe and from Britain particularly, that intent fell away and the cross was replaced by the sword.